Good morning, everybody, Good morning. and welcome. To all of you that this is your first time here, you're very welcome. We're so glad to see you. And those of you that have been coming forever, welcome, welcome, welcome. Next Sunday, we will not have a service at the regular time. We are going to have a Christmas Eve family service led by Laura Keith King. Bring family, friends, and guests for a special service of carols and readings for all ages, including with, concluding with a traditional candle lighting ritual. A special offering will be taken to benefit our members' assistance. Thank you. assistance fund, which is used through the year to help our church families in need. The offering at the Christmas Eve family service every year goes to replenish the members assistance fund at UUCP. If you are not able to attend the Christmas Eve service but would like to contribute to the fund, you may indicate that when you make the donation. We will now have our centering music. That was beautiful. And that was Bethlehem Lullaby Arrangement of the Coventry Choral. We will now have our opening words. Holy and beautiful the custom which brings us together in the presence of the Most High to face our ideals, to remember our loved ones in absence, to give thanks, to make confession, to offer forgiveness, to enlighten and to be strengthened. Through this quiet hour breathes the worship of ages, the cathedral music of history. Three unseen guests attend, faith, hope, and love. Let our hearts prepare them place. Now I will light the chalice. Now we will have Michael Newcomb light the Advent candle. Uh, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light a candle for love. Let your light shine, let your spirit soar. Love shines in the darkness, it sings in the shadows, 
It cannot be contained. Love, you lead us home. Thank you, Michael. That was beautiful. Now I would like to ask Penny to come forward and she'll light the menorah. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah, and I want to remind you that the Holy Family was Jewish and that they were probably celebrating Hanukkah at this time. This is a celebration. Many people have tried to wipe out the Jews. This was an early time when the Maccabees defended the temple. The temple was destroyed, but there was enough light left. They had an eternal flame, and there was enough oil for one night, but it burned for eight. And that is why we light eight candles throughout the holiday. We are starting with the first candle tonight, or this morning. <laughs> Uh, we will read the prayers first and then light the candles. On the first night, there are three prayers as opposed to two. And I will recite them in Hebrew and then uh, 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 translate, or somebody else is translating. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav Vitsivanu Lahadlik Ner Shel Hanukkah. Blessed are you, Adonai, sovereign of the universe, who makes us holy with your commandments, commanding us to kindle the light of Hanukkah. Baruch Katadanai. Eloheinu melech haolam, shi asad nisim laavoteinu veimoteinu bayamim haheim bazman hazeh. Blessed are you, Adonai, sovereign of the universe, who performed wondrous deeds for our ancestors in those ancient days at this season. And the third prayer, which is only said on the first night of Hanukkah, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehekianu Vakiamanu Vahigianu Lasman Hase Amen. Now we will have our opening hymn, Little Town of Bethlehem. Please go ahead and stand and remain standing for the covenants. Love is the spirit of this church, and service its law. This is our covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. 
Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, we will gather our offering, and I would like to remind you that we are a member-funded church, and so anything you can do to contribute to us, we would greatly appreciate it. to remember Barbara Goggins on her birthday. Thank you, Penny. You're welcome. And we also want to light an extra candle for everybody's joys and sorrows that you didn't want to mention. And now, without further ado, we are going to have our Christmas pageant. So... Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our nativity pageant. My name is Honor Bell III, and my pronouns are they, them, theirs. The story of the birth of Jesus will be told in several parts. After each part, we will all join in singing songs of response from our seats. Please keep your order of service handy so you, may, so you, will, be, so you will be ready to participate in the singing. And now the story begins. In the days of Caesar Augustus, it was ordered that a census should be taken in the entire Roman world. This would give an accurate count of all the people in the land so that each person could be properly taxed. Because of this, everyone had to go to the town of their ancestors in order to be registered. And so it was that Joseph and his fiance Mary set off on a trip to Bethlehem, the city of David. It was a difficult trip for Mary, for she was pregnant and almost ready to give, deliver her child. To make matters worse, when they, arrived, when they finally arrived in, in Bethlehem, it was crowded with people who had also come for the census, so was, there was no room at the, for them at the inn. Joseph, who cared deeply for Mary, was beside himself with worry because of her condition but finally found a stable where he could spend the night. He made her as comfortable as he could, and before long she gave birth to a fine young son. Using hay from the stable, Joseph fashioned a tiny bed and a small feeding trough and gently laid his newborn child lowly in the manger. Far into the night, he and Mary watched over him and their hearts filled with joy and love. Meanwhile, there were there in, the same, in that same country shepherds in a field, keeping watch over the flock by night. Suddenly, they were startled by a bright light, and an angel appeared before them. Then the whole sky lit up with a host of angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill to all. As the angels moved to the manger, and the shepherds did as well, 
After the shepherds heard the angels sing, they said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see if we can find this, this place where the baby is born. So they hurried off and before long found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the world, word concerning that they had been told about this child and all who had, who had heard it were amazed. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered in th them in her heart. The shepherds were filled with wonder and amazement for all, things, all the things they had heard and seen were just as they had been told. After Jesus was born, three magi and came to Jerusalem and asked, Hark, where is the one born the king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and are here to worship him. Enter star. <laughs> when King Herod heard, him, heard this, he was greatly disturbed, for he knew he had no son who was in line for the throne of Israel. So he summoned the Magi to seek out the child, telling them to come back and let, them, let him know exactly where he was. So the Magi, who were astrologers and therefore knew much about the stars, set out on a journey to find the babe in the manger. It was not long before they were dazzled by, the, by a great star in the east, which, came, which seemed to be leading them directly to the birthplace. They traveled for many hours following the star, where it shone down on the stable, and they, where there, there they found what they had see, been seeking. We will sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. Magi saw the newborn baby, they knew this was, that this was a special king they had heard about. But they had been warned in a dream not to go back to King Herod with this news because the baby would surely be harmed. So before returning to their own country by another route, each one in turn bowed down before the child and presented him with a special gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We shall now sing We Three Kings. And so ends the story of the birth of Jesus of Nazareth. It is a story of love and peace and goodwill to all people. It is a story of yearning for that place in our heart where divinity and humanity interact. But above all, it is a story of hope. For like the babe in the manger, every child who comes into this world with the promise of a new life and brings the promise with new life and new opportunity. And therein lies our strongest affirmation, that all things can yet again be born anew. Celebrate this baby, this tiny babe, so meek and mild, for the world is looking for the grace of God in the face of every child. Thank you.
Hang on, looking for my piece of paper. <laughs> well, we're just gonna wing it. <laughs> because I lost my piece of paper. Yes, please. <laughs> this is Denise. She was in charge of this, so here you go. Hi, I'm Denise. My pronouns are she and her, and I've been in charge of this for about a week, so I think we did pretty good. <laughs> we would like for you to be introduced to each of these awesome people who are up here on the stage today. First, we have the beautiful Mary and baby Jesus, which, who is played by Mahogany. Mahogany, could you stand up for us, please? Right. Next, we have Joseph, played by Vari. These two are both understudies who also filled in for us last minute, so we're very appreciative that uh, they had studied their roles and were well prepared. Then we have an incredible donkey, played by Keegan. <laughs> A beautiful shining angel, played by Elliot, whose pr pronouns are they and them. And assisting as a last minute angel is Mary Beth. We have awesome helpers in our church. The shepherd is Desmond. Thank you, Desmond. His other sidekick, Shepherd, Brett, also a last minute jump in and help us out. And the star of the show, <laughs> Mary Ann. <laughs> and finally, we have one last request. Stand oh, you wise? Oh, the wise guys. Yeah, the wise guys. <laughs> How could I forget the wise guys? First of all, we have Chris Brock Brockway, James, he and him, and Paula. Now I think I've got everybody. And oh, you guys, I'm sorry again. I told you one week we're doing okay, right? Honor, honor. Our outstanding narrator did a remarkable job, and we thank our sound room person, our pianist for accompanying us, and everybody else who helped us put this together. We have had a blast. Now we have one final request. <laughs> Vari and Mahogany since they came in and agreed to help us out last minute, and we're so happy that they did, we got a little jingle gift for them, and they would like to request that everybody stand and sing along with them and sing. What is it, you guys? I forgot. What song was it? Jingle Bells. <laughs> One more round of applause for this awesome cast. Oh, yeah.